very glad evening friends this is madhavi here with you for the 114th edition of five editorials of the week i'm very glad to meet you again for this wonderful session on discussing the most important editorials on the past week so this very important editorials i found it very important because it has included uh, lots of important uh, uh, trends in the current uh, affairs especially when it comes to artificial intelligence which is very important in gs3 science and technology and it is also important for your essay because artificial intelligence development has been coming forward so there can be a question about its impact its uh, potential its uh, prospects its uh, uh, its challenges that the uh, the it poses for the indian society as well as for the larger world and in the demographic trends on women it's always a question from gs1 society or gs2 social justice or it can be also included as if there is an essay on women so demog how demographic trends impact the women or how it affects the gender it's a very important trend that you have to understand and forest conservation amendment bill 2023 it's a point of discussion always whenever there is a upsc question it, they always pick at least one or two question from the acts bills or any amendments that are there in the current affairs and south china sea dispute is very important in the perspective of the international relation question that is there in the gs2 paper because always they keep asking about any disputes and how it impacts indian relations or india's uh, interest in that particular region as well as in the larger world and the cpi basket there is a look into the cpi basket usually this consumer price index is used as a inflationary indicator by the rbi but there uh, there the authors in this particular editorial have looked into the cpi basket and how effective it is and how it is not effective is the point of discussion by the authors so it's a very very important topics which i hope it will be useful for you to we will be looking at why i picked the editorials at the end of the session and small snippets of other editorials as well so with that note we will look move into this particular thing and we will also look at the five editorials of the week where and which are, uh, article it was ai's disruptive economic impact this was there in the july 11 world population day so i i told you, you know this demographic trends on women so this is a important editorial which is basically be because world's population day was on july 11 so we saw two different editorials on july 11 to celebrate world's population day so there is a uh, important two editorials which we will discuss at the couple of forest conservation amendment bill 2023 so this is not the topic of the particular editorial but the topic the editorial is about this conservation amendment bill so it was on july 12 then about south china sea dispute this was on july 13 and how the cpi basket conceals the inflation picture this was on july 13 so this is very important so let's go into this ai's disruptive economic impact and indian check so this is an important editorial which we will discuss here friends remember this particular topic is very important in the perspective of essay as well as in your gs3 friends the gs3 the average marks have reduced because we are missing areas and we are missing uh, science and technology as an important topic for our upsc preparation so we have to focus on science and technology especially only few topics which are very trending and which is very very uh, potential for asking question so a is disruptive economic impact and indian check let's go into this particular topic here we will have a story uh to talk and then we will move on to this particular uh, editorials in specific we will look at the points that are moved forward so coming up with this topic so let's talk about one by one a lot, small story behind it so what is this ai's disruptive economic impact we need to know what is an ai which is an artificial intelligence which is a part of the fourth industrial revolution 
So we need to know what are the other industrial revolution, what is first, second, third, and fourth. And then we have to understand what is the gener general or they call it gen uh, this generative or uh, general artificial intelligence, generative or general artificial in intelligence. You need to do, know the difference between the narrow artificial intelligence and the generative artificial intelligence, which is the most common two types of this artificial intelligence. <clears throat> the third is the impact, both positive and negative. What is the future potential and what are the uh, dangers through the artificial intelligence and what are the issues and how we look at this artificial intelligence. And fifth is the way forward. So these are the important things that we will discuss here in this particular uh, editorial. So let's move on to this uh, particular editorial. So let's go back in the background. What is the background of artificial intelligence? As you all know, we started with this first industrial revolution around, uh, for India, it is around the 19, uh, after independence for the British, it is around the 19th century. So now industry 1.0 is about mechanization, wherein we started uh, discovering steam engines. So we started mechanizing the production uh, thing. So ag agriculture was the basis of our uh, 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 income or uh, employment. But later we started industries and we mechanized all the means of uh, processes. So that is the uh, industry 1.0. Industry 2.0 mass production. So we did mass production, creating assembly lines. If you look at an automobile, the automobile or a bike when produce the bike would spare parts, other assembly, total or assembly line when produce them. So that is the important assembly line. Uh, uh, there was, uh, if you go and watch uh, see Tata or any any uh, important automobile companies all the spare part other assembly line madri they will uh, they will assemble all the spare parts then the whole structure will uh, be thing and then there will be a final testing and checking and then uh, there will be a test driving and then they will go to a distribution so all these are in an assembly line and there is a mass production so in a day there will be uh, around 250 or some thousands of uh, bikes or uh, cars produced in a day because this is an assembly line production and use of electrical energy far from the steam engine. So earlier we used steam power and now we shifted to electrical energy. And then we started talking about automation, computers and electronics. So this is electrical, this is electronics. We started using hardware. And then the final uh, fourth industrial revolution is cyber physical systems. What, me, what do you mean by cyber physical systems? You, say, for example, you are using your smartphone. You are able to connect the smartphone with your uh, fan. So fan or uh, your door, doors. You are just clicking your, uh, your cell phones and you're closing and opening the door or you're controlling the AC. Uh, you are using your phone itself as a remote control for the fan, doors, AC, TVs, and everything. So there is a connection between all these there are sensors used to understand that you need to close all the electrical uh, or electronics just when you close the door so like this there are sensors there are uh, uh, connections between the phone your uh, uh, phone and other uh, appliances so this is a important thing that is there in the industry 4.0 cyber physical system important uh, developments or internet of things so internet of things means your all doors your uh, uh, your coffee maker your bread uh, toasters whenever you, you when you wake up and you switch off your alarm alarm stop and the signal the coffee will uh, uh, coffee maker will start the uh, bread toaster will start so uh, your uh, uh, heat geyser will start so all these are totally connected that is called as internet of things so totally through internet all the appliances are being connected whenever you and uh, uh, the signal is from your uh, when you switch off your alarm so like this there are interconnections in the cyber physical systems and uh, 3D. Then there is a 3D uh, printing. We are also having cloud computing. We are having uh, by big data, big data. So all these are part of this industrial four point, industry 4.0 or indus fourth industrial revolution that we have to talk about. And then when we talk about this, 
artificial intelligence we need to know what is artificial intelligence and what are the broad types of this artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is a field which combines computer science and robust data sets basically it is using computer science as well as data sets so big data big data is the information that you will feed to the computer and the computer will process using algorithms so the big data is the one which is fed into the uh, computers so big data fed into the computers the big data includes the video form of data audio form of data voice data uh, in any kinds of data and then this big data is processed in the computers using various softwares and then it is uh, coming up some with some output or some actions whatever uh, the big data is for so this is a important uh, part of this artificial intelligence and it is using various algorithms to follow it say there is a self driving cars so self driving cars is usually using the gps data the traffic signals the uh, the the, uh, the past history data the road uh, data everything it is using a multiple now multiple different data so gps data is in the form of uh, video and audio uh, so all these data the self driving cars which is the application of artificial intelligence is using and it is helping us in you know, uh, running the cars so all these are a part of our applications of artificial intelligence it is enabling problem solving so edacho or problem driverless cars illana uh, vandu assembling or producing a car in the or problem a irundhal it is able to solve using artificial intelligence and the sub fields of this particular artificial intelligence is machine learning and deep learning just like in human learn certain things ipo vandu fire na sudu சின்ன வயசுல ஃபயர்னா சுடும் அப்படின்றது வந்து நம்மளுக்கு தெரியும் ஸோ ஃபயர்னா சுடும்னா வந்து அந்த ஃபயரை வந்து நம்ம அவாய்ட் பண்ணுவோம் அந்த ஃபயரை வந்து ஃபயர் பண்ணும் போது ரொம்ப கேர்ஃபுல்லா இருப்போம் ஃபயரை வந்து எப்படி டிஃபியூஸ் பண்றதுன்றத படிப்போம் ஸோ இதெல்லாம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா த்ரூ அவர் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் அவர் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் டெவலப்ஸ் ஸோ தட் இஸ் அ ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் ஹியூமன் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் சிமிலர்லி த ஆர்டிஃபிஷியல் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் வில் ஆல்சோ லேர்ன் ஃப்ரம் த டேட்டா ஃப்ரம் த எக்ஸ்பீரியன்சஸ் from the algorithms and that is called as machine learning and deep learning deep learning is very very uh, uh, deeper enough that e e uh, the machine can uh, do something even without human intervention but machine learning is little uh, above that it needs human intervention so uh, machine deep learning is more advanced than the machine learning and these two are the important sub fields of this artificial intelligence that you have to understand and you have to also understand just because it is artificial intelligence it does not mean that it is replacing the human intelligence human intelligence have various networks or new uh, if you understand we have our neurons which is storing our information processing our information and uh, controlling our actions so human intelligence is like that we the artificial intelligence is trying to emulate the human intelligence it has tried and it is trying also so when the evlo duro when it is successful aguna theriyadu but it is first first or nama when the first first try pandrathu when the narrow artificial intelligence adavud we will try to do specific tasks like a human so when this or perform specific tasks like a human like uh, language uh, translation அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு ஸ்பெசிபிக் டாஸ்க் மட்டும் ஃபாலோ பண்றது வந்து வீக் ஏஐ ஆர் நேரோ ஏஐ ஆர் ஆர்டிபிஷியல் நேரோ இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் சோ திஸ் இஸ் அ ஒன் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் தட் யூ ஹவ் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தென் தேர் இஸ் அ ஸ்ட்ராங் ஏஐ சோ ஸ்ட்ராங் ஏஐ இஸ் வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் when it comes to artificial intelligence and this is basically a it is also called as generative or uh, general intelligence and it is you it is having an intelligence equal to humans so it is having very a uh, broad uh, intelligence or broad task which it can perform and the most advanced is the super intelligence artificial super intelligence it will surpass the human intelligence so that is where we will be having something called as uh, catastrophes uh, like uh, apocalypse wherein the the robots will uh, will uh, will take over the humans so and the madri or situation ipadikku varadu but irundalum and the madri or imagination vandu nariya padathula vandiruk apocalypse appdi solittu nama vandu the the 
ரோபோட்ஸ் வில் டேக் ஓவர் த ஹியூமன்ஸ் அப்படின்ற ஒரு இது இருக்கு அது வந்து சூப்பர் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் கிடைச்சதுன்னா ஒரு எமோஷன்ஸ் எல்லாமே அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் பண்ணிக்கிற ஒரு ரோபோட்டா இருந்ததுன்னா தென் இட் இஸ் பாசிபிள் ஸோ தட் இஸ் வேர் யூ ஹாவ் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் சேலஞ்சஸ் தட் ஆர்டிஃபிஷியல் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் போர்சஸ் அண்ட் த டெவலப்மெண்ட்ஸ் இன் த ஆர்டிஃபிஷியல் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் ரெண்டு விதமாகவும் இதை பார்க்கணும் then what is the difference between deep learning machine learning and artificial intelligence as you see it's a subset of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is using logic rules uh, and it is deciding But whereas machine learning is learning from the past and it is processing and it is uh, doing something and deep learning it is again more advanced it is training it is no it does not need even a human intervention it can learn from the past and it can perform on itself and it will define its own algorithm based on the past experiences that is what is deep learning is then artificial intelligence as you understand this artificial intelligence is very important so we will look at what are the points that the author wants to see the author wants to speak about the positive as well as negative impacts through various datas friends idla vanda nariya datas irukum adu moolama artificial intelligence evlo dhoora vanda positive impact aagudhu negative impact aagudhu adoda challenges enna way forward enna abindradha author vanda alaga sollirkaru so this will be very useful for your essay what are the benefits MIT economists talked about increasing workers productivity by 14% and it is also thereby improving the consumer satisfaction so artificial intelligence vandu productivity increase pandradhanal consumer um satisfy aagiranga adanal vandu it is also increasing employee retention idu vandu romba different ana aspect enna na employee retention vandu inga pathi pesranga so employee retention vandu eppadi irukudhu appadina productivity increase aaradhanal the satisfaction that the consumer is having has increased the employee's uh, retention abdin solranga so this is very important for you to understand because employee retention da or periya problem ena employee retention vandu or periya problem a ellaru pesranga ena employee retention uh, ena mostly the it industries there is a lot of uh, uh, retention problem so everybody changes their it industries they uh they go uh, go out uh, go to different different uh, industries they change their like wipro la rendu hcl porudhu hcl la rendu idukku porudhu idella vandu oru periya prachana because they are not satisfied but using uh, artificial intelligence their work burden will reduce and there is an increased employee retention that the uh, the author is talking about through various status and the experts suggest that generative ai may not replace employees so this is one of the a uh, positive aspect that the author is talking friends every time it is always a dis- disruptive technology so that the ai madri or disruptive uh, technology vande epayume unemployment create panni da pogum ipo vande nama vande mechanized mass production assembly line idala pannum bodhu or significant unemployment nadandhudu fourth industrial revolution ku munnadi nama nadandha first second third epayume or technology ulla varumbodhu mechanization nadakkumbodhu unemployment create agum but it will subside because there will be new employment which are created so new employment on high values high value production adu vandu create agum appo enna aganum new employment create agano adu vandu high value system la vandu create agum பட் நீங்க வந்து அதுக்கு வந்து எப்படி எக்யூப் ஆகணும் யூ ஷுட் ஆல்சோ ஹாவ் ஹை ஸ்கில்ஸ் யாருக்கு இப்ப அன்எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் போகும்னா அன்எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் ஆகும்னா த பீப்புள் வித் புவர் ஸ்கில் ஆர் அன்ஸ்கில்ட் ஆர் செமி ஸ்கில்ட் அவங்களுக்கு தான் அன்எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் கிரியேட் ஆகும் அவங்க வென் தேர் ஸ்கில்டு வென் தேர் அப்கிரேடிங் தம் செல்ஃப் தே வில் ஆல்சோ கெட் த நியூ எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் தே வில் பி அ பார்ட் ஆஃப் த நியூ அவென்யூஸ் ஆஃப் எம்ப்ளாய்மெண்ட் அது வந்து நம்ம தெரிஞ்சுக்கணும் ஸோ this is what the second point talks about and the study of price water house coopers is predicting a increase in gdp so there is a 14 percentage gdp increase through artificial intelligence especially when it is increasing the productivity increasing the production it has it will significantly increase the growth also and then uh, it generative ai is potential to create human like output and its ability to break down the communication barriers 
so it will be able to translate english just whatever slang or whatever accent you are speaking it will be able to translate so ninga vandu ipo enna maadhiri voice irundhalo tone irundhalo slang irundhalo accent irundhalo adu vandu adu vandu language translate pannudhu so it is breaking the human barriers and it's producing human like output so the productivity and the efficiency has increased so much so that it is increasing the growth as well and it is increasing the adoption of artificial intelligence ena indha maadhiri vandu nama endha maadhiri accent yo language translate pandradunala நம்ம வந்து இதுக்கு முன்னாடி இருந்த கூகுள் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன்ல இருக்க ஒரு பிரச்சனை வந்து இப்ப வந்து சால்வ் ஆகும் ஆர்டிபிஷியல் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ்னால on the question whether artificial intelligence will, re- will result a substantial increase in growth rates of real per capita friends in the in the author vandu nariya question ah vandu post pandraaru and the question ku eppadi response irukku abindradha vandu paakraaru ipo vandu whether artificial intelligence will increase the growth abindnu kekkumbodhu nariya peru positive ah respond pandraanga and whether the ban on artificial intelligence adavadhu artificial irun artificial intelligence irundha growth nalla irukku nu nariye per positive ah solranga artificial intelligence ah ban panna innovation hamper agumna aduk aama nu nariye per solranga so artificial intelligence ah ban panna koodadhu nariye per opinion kudukranga ena artificial intelligence ah ban panna innovation hinder agum abindradha da inda author la author vandu solla try pandraaru and what are the challenges always a science and technology is a double edged sword so double edged sword nala adoda challenges nam therinjikonu so challenges enna appadina ai can automate repetitive task with generative ai so it is it is important that nama vandu repetitive task or romba repetitive task vandu nama artificial intelligence moolama nama replace pannidalam adha vandu nama mechanize pannidalam adha vandu nama vandu idu intelligence artificial intelligence ah maathidalam but so it will increase the efficiency and it will improve the speed but it also reduces the labor share so labor share vandu idu vandu reduce pannudhu abindrada author solrar so it is reducing the labor share and and it is uh, disrupting the employment and the wages and it is affecting the blue collar workers especially blue collar workers vandu idu affect pannudhu nu solranga and the wage declines of worker groups specialized in routine tasks so routine task ah nam automate pandradunala wage vandu decline aayidho adunala blue collar workers vandu affect aavanga and it is also causing inequality why inequality friends we understand that whomever is able to uh, uh, have uh, whomever is able to have or afford artificial intelligence or buy artificial intelligence they will grow so the rich will become richer and the poor will remain poorer especially the blue collar workers who is losing job who are poor skilled or unskilled or semi skilled will lose job this will create or uh, uh, aggravate the inequality especially the digital inequality uh, uh, that is uh, that is uh, overlapping on haves and have nots so money in uh, the resource inequality nadakkudhu digital inequality nadakkudhu adukapra vandu neriya inequality inga nadakkudhu ena vandu the blue collar workers is losing job because of the automation and uh, ai may intensify competition and deepen the technological divide this i have already told and what is it is intensifying competition there can be lo- new new artificial intelligence application which is creating competition friends competition is again a double edged sword it was it is good as well as it is uh, bad so competition will be resulting in better products better uh, better prices but competition again will uh, uh, cause uh, un, un um, inequality and uh, disruptions in the society at the early adopters idla vandu romba mukkiyamana vishayam vandu early adopters of ai will have a greater advantages win adanal winners takes all scenario irukum yaar win pandraangalo he is uh, becoming very rich so again rich becomes richer poor becomes poorer inequality results and the guardian that uh, the guardian the uh, magazine puts forward the idea that ai be highly disruptive as it is more likely to displace middle class white collared jobs 
சோ இது மொத மொத வந்து நம்ம ப்ளூ காலர் ஜாப் ரீப்ளேஸ் பண்ணணும்னு சொன்னோம் ஆட்டோமேஷனால இப்ப வந்து மிடில் கிளாஸ் ஒயிட் காலர் ஜாபையும் ரீப்ளேஸ் பண்ணுது இப்ப சாட் ஜிபிடி இந்த மாதிரி விஷயங்கள்லாம் லாங்குவேஜ் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் இந்த மாதிரி விஷயங்கள் அதுக்கப்புறம் வந்து ஈவன் ஈவன் கிரியேட்டிவிட்டி இமேஜினேஷன் இதெல்லாம் கூட வந்து இப்ப வந்து ஆர்டிபிஷியல் இன்டெலிஜென்ஸ் பண்ண போகுது ஸோ அதனால வந்து இப்ப வந்து ஆர்டிஸ்ட் இல்லைனா ஒரு மியூசிக் டைரக்டர் மியூசிக் டைரக்ஷன்ஸ் இந்த மாதிரி விஷயங்கள்லாம் வந்து அதை எடுத்துட்டு போகும்போது அது அதே பண்ணும் போது ஒரு மியூசிக் டைரக்ட் பண்றது இல்லைன்னா சாங் சிங் இது பாடுறது இந்த மாதிரி வந்து விஷயங்கள்லாம் அதை எடுக்கும் போது இட் இஸ் டிஸ்பிளேசிங் த மிடில் கிளாஸ் ஆல்சோ அண்ட் இன்க்ரீஸ்ட் எஃபிஷியன்சி பை த அடாப்ஷன் ஆஃப் ஏஐ will not board well for millions of indians who work in the field friends we are a la- we are a country with uh, labor intensive industries we have a large labor force if there are certain technologies which are taking away from or uh, automating the uh, uh, processes it will affect the labor force that we have to understand for a country like this like uh, gandhi says we should not industrialize so much so that it is reap or it is displacing the labor force so and the madri or mechanization or and the madri or industrialization or panna kudadu nu solranga ena india is having a large labor force we have to use them for employment we have to employ them if you are using automation it will create unemployment only it will not create enough jobs so that is a problem that ai has and regulation of the ai is also a problem if you regulate too much there will be investment going away and uh, uh, there will be little applications in a business when the business when the they want less regulations so in the mother name are over regulation for the mother investment so in a business so in application so in a startup so on the artificial intelligence level at one the come me I know I think I'm in a part of now we need to have self regulations or we need to have just broad guidelines and ask them to innovate and bring more AI but other now low disruptions not a good other now let him unemployment not a good other now one that I'm our balance for no 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 we need to go a long way this is what the author that is talking about and there is a challenges for society especially when it comes to labor market that we have already talked and it is also disrupting the politics because unemployment are create agum mode political instability create agum extremism create agum terrorism create agum youth 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 oda energy vanda nama use pannala na youth oda energy burst aidichu na it will be misused it will be uh, uh, it will be wasted so and the or issue vanda it will affect the politics economy grow aga the unemployment irukum so adanalu vanda political instability nadakum adutha data privacy issue is another problem ai is also a, a room for many cyber or uh, cyber threats so adanalu data privacy crime uh, warfare even there are uh, cyber war or cyber warfare or cyber terrorism or spy cyber uh, cyber espionage or cyber spying so at the madri vand or uh, international uh, conflicts vand cyber uh, space moolama kondu poradunal it is affecting the uh, international peace it is affecting the economic growth or in national growth it is affecting the privacy it is cre- it is making room for crimes so all these are the challenges in the artificial intelligence and what is the author is talking about as a way forward he is talking about uh, a professor from mit who says we need to restructure the business process and increase the investments in ai to fully leverage ai so we ai is a potential ai is having laws it will increase productivity but we have to restructure our business process to accommodate or uh, or uh, invest on ai to adopt uh, artificial intelligence that is what the author is talking about uh, from the professor who was uh, from mit who is saying saying that we need to restructure the business process so that everybody and the pros- businesses is able to adopt the artificial intelligence and pwc report again is talking about the increase in gdp because of the artificial intelligence so the author is saying we need to invest and we, we need to adopt artificial intelligence but the point is he is also saying that we need to create a workforce who are able to work in uh, artificial intelligence so we need to educate them train them we need to uh, we need to uh, open more disciplines or more uh, graduation in uh, that is there for artificial intelligence we need to do a pg or we need to open phds in uh, artificial intelligence we need to equip the education system we need to create many skills based on artificial intelligence to create a uh, workforce that are uh, skilled in ai
that is what the author is talking about so that we have an advantage of the demographic dividend you know demographic dividend means we have a large working population and if the large working population is having skills in ai they'll be employed in artificial intelligence they are having higher productivity because of that so they will have higher economic growth and so new opportunities we they have to use the new opportunities that emanate from artificial intelligence and the governments would have to step up the cyber regulations so in the this point we will have to reduce the unemployment through adopting ai and skilling them on the other hand there are cyber threats because of the ai other reduce mandradukku we need to step up cyber regulations and also we need to tax the companies which are using the artificial intelligence so that we are generating more revenues and we are balancing the returns from capital and labor ena in the artificial intelligence is a capital intensive industry but namma vandu namma india ku theviyana industry vandu labor intensive industry so government should balance both these capital and labor so artificial intelligence vandu automate pannalum namma vandu employment create pananu and also cyber regulations so pananu so that there is no privacy problem or any crime or warfare that is happening in the cyber space so this is what the author is talking about and in the next uh, conclusion he is talking about there is a uh, all every industrial revolution will result in the disruption in the in employment or disruption in the society so this you have to understand and artificial intelligence will create unemployment in some people and in some areas but it will create employment for some people and for in some areas so we need to skill them and we need to change them to the higher value jobs Uh, or higher value processing or higher value uh, higher value production uh, process so that is what the author is talking about there is ever growing advancement in artificial intelligence so we have to grab it we need to invest on it that is what the author is talking about and in the world population day that is on july 11 there was two different articles which were talking about women so basically a gender or a woman based topic is always important in the indian society as well as for sa so i took both these article i have clubbed these articles but i have written the, or i have taken the points separately based on these two articles because these two articles though it talks about the women but it is on the different perspectives here they is talking about how women's reproductive autonomy is very important and here it is talking about how demographic transition is impacting the women's life so this is very two different article but whenever it comes to an essay you can both combine these two important uh, points when it comes to an agenda uh, gender based essay so that is very important and uh, uh, always friends demographic transition impacts women more than men that you have to understand because they are the one who are uh, increasing the population they are the one who are uh, uh, who are uh, have who are t- giving birth to the children they are the one who are caring for the children they are the one who are balancing their own work as work as well as their uh, children so there are there is a need for empowering them more than men but still the women uh, men always have to support the uh, the uh, other half uh, that is the women so that is uh, there women cannot do anything without the men's support and uh, the women have not done anything because of the men's suppression also so the both the situation we have to understand because we are in a patriarchal society so that is very important so we have a long way to go to uh, move uh, uh, or fight against this patriarchal society so these two authors have uh, given a very very practical innovative uh, steps forward for imp- empowering the women so that i like this article so much and it is very important for your upsc as well so what is the uh, first thing is women's reproductive autonomy as a new catch word so theme of this year's world population day is itself is about women it is unleashing the power of gender equality uplifting the voices of women and girls to unlock our world's infinite possibilities so when the the world population day is theme is saying whenever the women and girls power is unleashed it will create infinite possibilities possibilities in the sense of uh, increase in growth increase in uh, production increase in uh, the life uh, uh, increase in uh, environment production conservation everything so a woman is creating potential possibilities on in in every field is what the author uh, the population day is talking about and when we unlock the full potential of women 
you can galvanize half the leadership ideas innovation creativity because women has a different journal or a different uh, perceptions or different uh, points of thoughts so ipo vandu men oru maadhiri yosikkranga na women oru maadhiri yosipanga men ku oru talent irundha women ku oru talent irukum men and women always fill the gap in a family system in the uh, in the uh, in the work uh, in the production everything so there should be a proper proportion of women and men in the parliament in the workspace as well as in the family so that if at all both them or uh, both of them given uh, 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 adequate space they will be able to fill the gap and have a en uh, enriched family life enriched uh, production enriched uh, parliament uh, uh, politics so that you have to understand so we have to galvanize half the leadership ideas innovation and creativity which are in store in women so women or the potential when the half of the population is women so we need to create leaders we need to use their ideas you we need to uh, ask them to innovate create so that is very important and um, there is a template for women led development so we are in india world's most population development we have started uh, promoting women entrepreneurs so uh, women of entrepreneurs women entrepreneurs we are promoting women entrepreneurs there are lots of good examples like even this uh, the re recent chandra in 3 chandra in 2 mangalyaan we have a lot of uh, women's role in such rocket launches in such satellite launches in such missions so this we are understanding like tessie thomas who is the missile woman of india there is a lot of women led development which is happening and women is very very important role, uh, playing an important role in various uh, various uh, uh, pro, uh, various uh, um endeavors that i can talk so this is very important but we need to also think about having giving them the reproductive autonomy whether in a family whether they have the role in deciding how many children they want how many uh, how many children they want or how many or when they want so are they having their role in uh, deciding the number of children number of children also so number of children so all these are they not there they are is, there is a domestic violence they are thinking that they are uh, uh, women uh, be men beating women is normal so um, uh, idu or domestic violence vand adavadhu or men vand um, women beat pandrathu vand correct da adu vand women vand sari padathradhukku da or or amma vand kolandi adikkuradho adu appa vand kolandi adikkira maadhi da husband vand women adikkuradhu appdina avanga nenachittirukanga but that is affecting her uh, reproductive autonomy her, that is affecting her bodily integrity so that is affecting her bodily integrity so there is Uh, important uh, rights under article 21 which is talking about bodily integrity dignity dignity self respect and reproductive autonomy so all these are a part of article 21 that you have to understand so every woman has uh, has to decide how many children when the, they want children number of children or even wh whether they want the children or not so all these should be should be uh, decided by the women of the family and it should be in consultation with the men also but men should not overpower women that is what the author is talking about so here the problem in hand is instead of ensuring reproductive autonomy for each woman we are obsessed with total fertility rate so instead of empowering women giving her a reproductive autonomy we are only talking about total fam, uh, fertility rates uh, reducing the fertility rates or whether we need to have a small family or a larger family so the author is saying we need to empower women we need to give the decision power in the women rather than government telling them what is the ideal size of the family or how we should reduce the total fat fertility rate this is what the author is saying we need to empower women rather than state is saying or men is saying what is the population or what is the size of the family or ideal population size total fertility rate so we need to not uh, the government should not focus on total fertility rate but rather than uh, we have to empower the women that is what the author is talking about and uh, solution is she uh, the author is saying we have to improve the reproductive and sexual health decisions 
that is taken by the woman and it should not be based on discrimination, coercion and violence. We have to uh, understand friends, still even after 20, uh, even in this 21st century, we are having discrimination, coercion and violence. Even there are female feticide, infanticide, sex selective abortions. There are illegal sex selective abortions still happening in the way at various points. So we have to understand we need to give reproductive and sexual health decisions. And also we have to improve on the government side, on the hospitals. We have to improve the reproductive and sexual health services as affordable, acceptable, accessible, and of high quality. Because there are, in the Chhattisgarh, I remember, there was a lot of death due to sterilization, female sterilization. So there, uh, we need to improve uh, health services, especially reproductive health services, which of high quality, so that the people are coming forward and accessing these resources. Because we need to uh, first dismal the or we need to uh, take away the myth that uh, contraceptions or any contraceptives are very healthy only it is not affecting the pleasure or it is not affecting the uh, health of the particular woman or the men so you have to understand this is very important we need to create a trust for uh, on the uh, contraceptions on the sexual health services, reproductive services, on sterilizations. So we need to create a trust on the family planning methods. And women and couples are supported to have the number of children they want when they want them. So it is not the parents or the government should decide what is the number of children they want or when they want them. It is the woman and the couple, couple that is the men and the woman should decide on how many children they want. So we need to empower them. We need to nurture them rather than enforce them. And the progress in India, we have a very good progress. We are the one first country which started this national family planning program. Except for the emergency, emergency time, we have forced sterilization, which is very, very bad. But other than that, we have a national population policy 2000. And later, we also improved the population um, uh, programs uh, and family planning programs. We introduced a lot of contraception, uh, contraceptive methods. We, um, uh, we, uh, we also incentivized the the sterilization, especially when it comes to male sterilization, we provided them the uh, the rice, the food, uh, or healthy uh, supplements and all. So there is a progress in India. We had very family planning initiatives. We provided modern, short, and long-acting reversible contraceptives, permanent methods, and information, counseling services, including emergency contraceptions. We provided them through ASHA. ASHA is the national, uh, coming under the national health mission. So we are providing, we have a separate national population policy. We have a separate national health mission, which is uh, promoting the family planning activities. So we have a multifaceted or we have a, we have a different, different methods. We have used every methods for family planning. And India's commitment towards the family planning 2030 partnership includes expanding its contraceptive methods. So we have improved or we have expanded, like we have a contraceptions using uh, pills. We have contraceptions using, say, like uh, condoms. Condoms for, for women, we have used a copper tea or uh, some uh, intrauterine devices. So intrauterine devices and uh, there are sterilization, sterilization. Sterilization is the last method. This is because it's a permanent uh, one, but for men it is reversible, but for women it is permanent. So for men it is called as vasectomy. For women it is called a tubectomy. So for men it is reversible, but for women it is non-reversible that you have to understand. And sterilization is the last me final method of for family planning and uh, these are the preventive methods so preventive methods to uh, space pregnancy so you can space pregnancy be between different children or you can prevent pregnancy prevent pregnancy or you can just have a, a or a, you space and prevent so these are things and we also have pills and uh, there are lots of uh, in, uh, important uh, things in pills so there are uh, pills which are used like uh, very easy pills or uh, you know. so there are different different innovations that has happened in the contraceptions method and life expectancy has also improved uh, remember that friends so for women it is more important that the life expectancy has increased because she has more life expectancy than the men so she she has to understand that 
she will have to uh, have the burden of uh, going through her life and uh, without her husband. So old age people, that is called a feminization of old age. So if you understand, that is something called as feminization of old age, which we will talk about in this next article. So feminization of old age is there because the life expectancy of women is more than men. And uh, she usually marries uh, men who are, who are older than her. So she will be uh, widowed very soon. So she will be having a life, a widowed uh, life because her, she usually uh, marries a husband who is senior to her. So she has to take care of herself. She will not be having, she don't, don't have any education because earlier we don't have enough education given to the girls. So the, the older parents now, especially the older uh, female now, the grandmothers now are widowed without any skill, without any education, without any, uh, 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 they cannot participate in any production, productive work. So because of lack of education that are provided to the woman. So the author is telling that we need to provide them education. We need to provide them uh, 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 reproductive services. And we need to provide them awareness. Because the woman who is of older age, without any skill, without any education, will have a very bad life. So sh the thing, thing is here, they are telling that we need to improve the life of women. And the other progress in India is we have improved the maternal uh, maternal mortality. We have reduced the maternal mortality to 97. So we have attained the Millennium Development Goal. We have attained the Millennium Development Goal by reducing the maternal mortality to less than 100. And we also reduced the child marriages and also teen pregnancies. Teen pregnancies means uh, getting uh, pregnant in the age of uh, 16 to 19 or this teenage. So that is teen pregnancy that is uh, reduced. So that's a very good sign. So there is a significant prog progress in the uh, gender empowerment. But we have to provide them health, education, and nutrition whenever is possible. And it is must for the healthy aging of women. And the benefits are new contraceptive options have increased the women's rights and autonomy. And we have timely quality and affordable family planning services. And we are uh, we are promoting the maternal mortality and we are reducing, uh, sorry, we are reducing the maternal mortality, morbidity and healthcare expenditure. What is morbidity means? Morbidity means, uh, see, we are having some illness. So morbidity means we have a very bad or uh, ailments, very bad ailments that are affecting our product, uh, effect, uh, effective life or uh, productive life. So that is called as morbidity. Mortality na yerandu poorudu. Morbidity na nama uyiroda thaa irukkoum, but edhaachu uru noi ila irukkoum, ili na edhaachu uru ailment ila irukkoum. Adhanala nama productive a irukkoum odi ila. So that is called as morbidity that you have to understand. And in fact, rising the women's labor force participation by 10 percentage points is, uh, will increase the potential GDP by 70 percentage. So that's very important for you to understand. So this is the potential of women. And uh, dark sides of the society is many women continue to lack physical autonomy. That is a marital violence, which is considered normal. And it is uh, it, uh, the women are accepting the marital violence. And nearly half of all pregnancies in India are unplanned. It is just happening without any proper awareness. So that is very important that we provide awareness. So what is the way forward? We have an aging society. We have a poor uh, labor productivity because of the la uh, lack of skills, lack of education, uh, and also morbidity. So we need to achieve gender parity in the workforce. We need to improve our human capital and inclusive economic development. So instead of talking about population stabilization, we need to talk about providing a reproductive autonomy, reproductive choices for women in this population dynamics. So that is what the author wants to summit here. And even we want to have a gender just process. So we need to provide gender justice. We need to provide invest on uh, women, especially from her ch childbirth to maturity. So we need to uh, promote her education, promote her reproductive hygiene, reproductive health. We have to provide them all the necessary things that she needs throughout her life. 
so we have to provide gender equality centered growth rights and choices that is what the uh, author wants to submit and the next is how the demographic transition is impacting women's life so in this i wanted to tell you friends what are the transition that has happened so what are the transition that has happened we have a aging society that i uh, i told you earlier so almost more than 11 percentage of the population is uh, old age or above 65 or uh, 60 plus or 65 plus next is we have a young population now so that's good that is 62.5 percentage is younger population and we have a very good number of uh, children also but the life expectancy is increasing we have to understand life expectancy is increasing so more and uh, especially for women so feminization of old age and if you understand there is something called as uh, we have to understand that life expectancy is increasing and the fertility that is total fertility rate that is the number of children that a woman has throughout her life is in they're reducing it is reducing more than 2.1 percentage so we have a declining we will be having a declining population soon and so we have an aging society. So all these are demographic transition. We have a small size family. We have only two children or one children in a family rather than three to five, which was earlier because we have reduced the total fertility rate. And there is a woman who is working. So woman has started working and she has, uh, she has various opportunity. And so the child care. It's a major important question that is coming now because women is working, the men is also working. What about the child? Who will take care of the child? That is the one important thing. So we need to uh, adopt a crash system. So we need to develop crash system, daycare system. So all these are the important things that the author wants to talk about. Other than joint family, which the author has not uh, talked about here, it is also one of the options that you can talk about. So demographic transition, India's demographic journey has changed the lives of citizens, especially women. What are the developments? We have increased the population. We have reduced the poverty. Uh, we have improved the public health. Medical miracles have happened. But the life expectancy is increasing. Fertility is declining and the mortality is declining and the life expectancy is uh, increasing. So what is the change that has happened in women, both positive and negative? We have to see what is the demographic a transition has impacted women's oneness friends we have uh the oneness sun meta preference what is sun meta preference this has been discussed in one of uh, economic survey reports so what is sun meta preference we are uh there is a too much preference for sun especially in a small size family in a small size family, there is a very, very important, uh, very, very high preference given to the woman because the men, sorry, men, because men is the one who's try who is considered to be uh, uh, t uh, uh, or a breadwinner, and he is the one who's considered to be a caretaker of the woman in the uh, older life. So he's try he's thought to be a caretaker for the old parents for the old parents in when they become old age, and we have a system of patri local residence. What is patri local residence? Because the parents, older parents, will usually settle with the men only. That is their uh, uh, their son only. So son kuda da vande ye old age parents vande tangvanga, not the daughter. So son kuda matto na oidu panang. Usually vande it is always the woman gets married and she settles with the men or the husband and the husband and the, uh, the grand grandmother and father will only set, settle with their son so this is the way which is called as patri local residence so patri local so we always settle with men patri so men is having giving the residence so it is always the men's residence where the woman after marriage goes and the uh, and the grandparents goes to their son only so that is a son meta preference so since there is a patri local residence since the men is considered as a caretaker since we have a very small size family it is always the son which is very much preferred than the woman so that is one impact on uh, negative impact on the changing demographics and the other uh, thing is uh, another thing is we have a lots of impact like uh, we are providing less for women so that is very important but positive aspect is we have a very small size family so we have a small size family so there is a lot of time for the woman to, uh, to be productive so she is getting employed so she is getting employed and uh, but 
the one question that is coming is what is what about child care so the author is giving certain suggestions here and she is also discussing the impacts so she is saying that there is a social norms and patriarchal kinship pattern so the woman is having a preference for sons so preference for son is there so preference for son is there and there is a because of the preference for son there is sex selective abortion there is neglect of sick daughters so the daughters are left to die uh this happens in uh, i think uh, shankut shaguntala devi and the movie la pathinga the akka vandu sikka irupanga avangala vandu avangala kandukama irundiruvanga so that is very important and the positive is with the fertility decline with the fertility decline active mothering occupies a smaller proportion of women's life so he she is having a creating space for education and employment so many women are getting employed educated because their family size has reduced and so the mother can always work as well as take care of her children so what is the mix it back though women's uh, educational attainment has increased but there is always a problem of yearly marriage and child bearing so we have a yearly marriage wherein the child, uh, the women are married after, just after college like in uh, 19th to 23 so she is having a burden of child bearing so she is not getting employed though she gets educated she is not getting employed so this is affecting her creative life she is, it is affecting her productive life so after getting children also if she thinks about uh, getting employment she will only go into a, a un, in, uh, informal jobs or uh, she also always for uh, for a balance for flexibility she goes to the informal jobs so that's very important that we have to understand so she is not having any social security even if she is getting employed so that's we have to understand uh, because of the reproductive uh, or child care uh, work so the author is telling that we have a lack of access to savings and property so woman is also not having any savings and property in her name and, and there is a vicious cycle of son preference to full circle so these are the challenges that the woman has in the current society early marriage child bearing son preference and uh, uh, um, and uh, the the uh, the positive is there is a creating space for education and employment because of the small size family what is the way forward though we cannot change the patriarchal norms in a quick manner what we have to do is we have to improve the women's access to employment and assets especially when it comes to property we have to provide inheritance for women and we have to improve the women's labor force participation and this can be possible only if we are able to provide child care and child care should be safe and affordable and so we have to promote anganwadi systems wherein they can create krish system and also the author is innovative uh, in uh, giving a practical solution she is telling that n riga workers that is mn riga workers can be uh, able to set up staff crushes so n riga worker vandu chuma physical infrastructure create pandradhukku mattum vekkama avanga vandu indha madri anganwadi run pandrathu angan crushes create pandrathu idhalavu avanga pannalam n riga workers pannalam child care pannalam self help groups kude self help groups kude vandu child care centers vandu start pannalam appdin solittu or important uh, innovative uh, solutions that the author is giving because she wants a woman to be employed but child care is safe and affordable irukiradhukku entryga workers illana self help group vandu child care child care centers vandu aarambikkalam appdin solranga and so we have to have a gender dividend so demographic dividend oda ipo vandha nama focus panna vendiyadhu vandha gender dividend because we have to use the half the population of india we have to use half the innovation half the leadership half the creativity because it's very uh, unproductive now they are not getting employed they are not they are only thinking about child caring rather than uh, going for employment so we have to provide an alternate for child care using crushes using child care centers and uh, use their productive life and then the forest conservation bill 2023 friends this is very important for you to understand the uh, the article is talking about green washing so the article is basically talking about how forest conservation bill is uh, this they are criticizing the or critically analyzing the forest conservation bill so this is very important for you to understand this is very very factor fact only but remember when you understand it's very easy for you to remember the facts what are the facts forest conservation bill so what is in the forest conservation bill friends remember that in 
in 1996 there was something called as goda varman case or goda varman case so this case the supreme court said that any forest any forest which are considered to be a forest okay enna or land illana na vandha any land which is considered to be a forest okay by the definition of dictionary dictionary definition padi adu vandha nama forest nu nenachona even if it is not notified as a forest okay even if it is not notified as forest it comes under forest conservation amendment abdin solitaanga adavadhu forest conservation amendment is in 1980 idla vandha enna pandranga they are conserving the forest okay and they are preventing any non forest activities any activities which will affect the forest like uh, deforestation cutting trees so this will affect the forest so forest conservation act is preventing the forest from non forest activities but uh, and uh, so any forest will be protected under forest conservation but in the 1996 goda varman case the supreme court saying forest will include all the forests which are having a dictionary definition of forest even if the if the state government or the central government has not notified forest so he here means any patch of uh, trees any land which a, with a patch of trees which are uh, like a forest like a forest like a forest or it can be considered as a forest by the definition of forest in the dictionary even if it is not notified then it will be considered as a forest only and it will be have to be protected under forest conservation act and you cannot cut the trees say there is a village people who have cultivated uh, some trees or there is a estate a private estate where they have cultivated trees or in the garden in a small in a, a large acre of land which is a garden for some good uh, uh, private people they have uh, planted many trees all will be considered as a forest under goda varman judgment so this has opened up a pandora box in uh, in uh, thinking that there are lots of uh, forest which has to be protected but the government is telling that is is uh, is not uh, accepting this judgment or uh, they are uh, they are diluting this judgment Through, through this forest conservation amendment bill they have done so certain uh, uh, restrictions in understanding what should be a forest supreme court judgment has opened the opened the thinking that everything which is a, like a forest is a forest even if it is not notified but the government is saying only those which are proposed as a forest or notified as a forest can be considered as a forest and it should be protected so it is diluting the supreme court judgment so this is one criticism against the forest conservation amendment but the what the government is saying that the government saying that we need to clarify this goda varman case by pointing out which one is a forest and which one is not a forest because the goda varman case or goda varman judgment has not given a cl clear uh, clarification on what should be a forest it has said all the forests which are by the definition of a dictionary will be a forest so the for the government is saying we will give a clarification on what is forest and what is not forest through this forest conservation bill 2023 but the but the uh, author and the other people environmentalists are criticizing that this is diluting the goda varman judgment so we will know we will understand what is goda varman judgment and what is this forest conservation bill is trying to do and what is the critical analysis of this particular bill so in the goda varman case that is in 1996 the supreme court has given a judgment that forest conservation act would apply to all land parcels that were either recorded as forest or resembled the dictionary meaning of the forest so a forest can be recorded as forest but it may not be notified as a forest but the forest conservation bill clearly says only the notified forest will be protected but here in the supreme court judgment they have said all the record all the uh, yeah, land which is recorded as forest should be protected so this is diluting the supreme court judgment so here in the first thing the in the preamble of the act they are saying that the purpose of forest conservation bill is to protect preserve the forest protect the biodiversity tackle the climate change 
so this is the purpose of this forest so whenever you introduce a question whenever they ask the question on forest conservation act you have to introduce using this the purpose of this act is to preserve forest uh, protect biodiversity and tackle climate change but what are the different or what are the changes that has been done from the earlier act to the current bill so earlier act that is in 1980 this act forest conservation act has restricted the de-reservation of forest has restricted the de-reservation of forest and it has lift and it has certain restrictions that that you cannot use the forest land for non forest purposes but but it also lifted certain restrictions with the prior approval of the central government so if the central government adha uh, the central government vandu in the forest land vandu edacho or non forest activity ku pannala appdi solittu approve pannita na okay but approve pannalena neenga vandu adha panna mudiyadhu de reserve panna mudiyadhu or forest ah non forest ah maatha mudiyadhu illa edacho or non forest activity andha edathula seiyava mudiyadhu central government approval illama so central government approval irundha adha la pannala and non forest approval non forest purpose include the using the land for horticulture using the land anything other than reforestation so those non forest activities are prevented or restricted if uh, otherwise uh, if uh, uh, they can be allowed if the central government is approving and a specific uh, it also specifies that is the older act also specifies certain activities like conservation management and development of forest and wildlife and what should be no, uh, what should be excluded from non forest purposes and the amendment bill actually adds zoos uh, uh, or constructing zoos and safaris eco tourism silviculture silviculture means planting trees okay so all these activities are now allowed in the forest so this is the dilution that the environmentalist is talking about but the uh, government is saying that this is in order to promote forest conservation so zoos and safaris eco tourism silviculture and any other purpose which the central government approves is allowed in the forest land this is what the conservation amendment bill talking about and uh, a bill also tells which is a forest so which is a forest any forest which are notified as forest under forest act 1927 and that uh, forest which are not covered in the first category but notified as a forest on or after 1980 is in a government record so here in the uh, in the uh, conservation amendment bill the uh, government is saying all the forests which are declared and notified under 1927 act and all the uh, forests which are notified only here notified after 1980 so all this as considered as a forest and the act will not apply to land changed from forest to non forest use after before 1996 so any forest which has been converted to non forest before 1996 will not come under the purview of this forest conservation and the bill also adds that if the central government is giving any directions to any authority earlier it was only state government now it can send the directions to any authority or organization it can be a private estates or anything they have to follow and it seeks to exempt so here in this non forest activities they have already told that the forest the forest can be used for uh silviculture zoos eco tourism idukalla use pannalam illana central government edacha vishayam approve pannalo and the forest land use pannalam nu sonnanga adutha enna exemption pandranga na any forest which are there in the 100 kilometers of international borders lac loc they can be uh, they can be deforested or used for linear projects like constructing roads railways everything so the forest land in the 100 kilometers of an international borders can be deforested or can be used for non forest activities like linear projects of uh, like a uh, road railways and it, they have also exempted uh, for security related infrastructure up to 10 hectares so the forest can be destroyed for linear projects as well as for any security related infrastructure what the government is saying the government is saying this is very important for national security public interest but what the environmental is saying this will dilute the forest it will prevent the forest conservation it will affect the climate change it will uh, promote climate change so this is what the environmentalist is talking about so this sent uh, this um, 
this uh, exemptions or this things which are uh, getting the approval of central government if central government is misusing this provision and allowing a uh, destroying of forest then it will be a uh, it will be a uh, uh, it will be a step step uh, it will be not a step in conservation rather it will be a step in degradation of the forest is what the author is talking about and uh, the status the forest conservation amendment bill is a status uh, that is the forest conservation amendment bill is in the joint committee of parliament for suggestions friends remember this whenever the bill is coming uh, to the parliament it ma may be uh, referred to a joint committee or a standing committee or any other committee that are coming so here instead of sending it to a standing committee which is usually a, the procedure because standing committee will be a scrutinizing committee and it will be more uh, democratic and it will be more uh, more uh, 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 impartial than the par joint committee because in the joint committee if you understand the joint committee usually have the uh, proportion that is there in the uh, parliament so there will be uh, more number of people from ruling party than the opposition so the author here not the author the environmentalist here has criticized the bill going to the joint committee instead of standing committee so standing committee ku kudukama joint committee ku kudutadhe criticize pandranga sir environmentalist but inga author adha pathi pesala but i am just telling you one of the criticism of this bill is uh, go not going to the standing committee but going to the joint committee and the joint committee inga vand author enna criticize pandranga na joint committee of parliament endha or amendment um solala adavadhu endha or changes um solala Forest Conservation Amendment Bill la, yenda oru changes on Joint Committee solla, yenda oru prachaniyu rise panla, yenna oru conflict to panla, ellathi a dilute panir kanga okay, apni naksa pani tanga, apni na that author solra. The Forest Conservation Act 1980 has been mantle piece of legislation in balancing the industrial development and conservation of forests. But originally, it is meant for notified forests. But the Goda government judgment, it has broadened the scope of the such a production. But growth in forest cover in inside the officially recorded forest is stagnant. So, forest cover in ISFR report. ISFR report padi namloda forest cover vandu ipodike 24.16 percentage but idile nama therinjukono forest cover vandu ipo increase aayit irukla enna increase aayit irukna tree cover da increase aayit irukku so inga vandu author enna solranga na the official recorded forest is stagnant appdinu solraru so officially recorded uh, forest is stagnant so forest cover vandu increase aagala so forest cover increase agada modu ipdi nama industrial development ku illana and border area la vande nama vande linear projects la allow pannanga inno forest cover vande degrade aidum especially for the people who are in northeast where in the international borders northeast la irukku pakistan la irukku nama boot idu skikkim la irukku ella edathilum irukku so and edathile la nama vande forest degrade pannona avangalukku vande periya prachaniya irukku especially for the tribal people who are dependent on the forest and there is a something called as forest rights act forest rights act you idu vanda affect agum ena they want a forest for their livelihood so it will affect the forest rights act abrino solraru in nare environmentalist is telling them so growth in forest cover inside officially recorded forest is stagnant so we have only 24.16 percentage of forest cover uh, uh, but totally we have increased only tree cover and not forest cover this is how we have to understand and india is already committed to increase the forest cover to 33 percentage and we need to add a carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons by 2030 so idella nama vandu nammaloada climate change korekkiradhukaga nama oru goal ah vandu nama potrukom punch mirth principle nu solla so punch mirth principle la vandu nama vandu carbon stock carbon sink ah vandu நம்ம இன்க்ரீஸ் பண்ணுவோம்னு சொன்னோம் பட் இந்த மாதிரி ஃபாரஸ்ட் கன்சர்வேஷன் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் பில் வந்து டைலூட் பண்றது வந்து இட் வில் அஃபெக்ட் தர் இட் வில் இட் வில் ப்ரொமோட் கிளைமேட் சேஞ்ச் அப்படின்னு சொல்றாரு அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் மெயின் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் மெயின் எக்ஸிஸ்டிங் ஃபாரஸ்ட் கன்சர்வேஷன் ஆக்ட் நைன்டீன் எயிட்டி டஸ் நாட் இன்சென்டிவைஸ் அதாவது கவர்மெண்டோட ஸ்டாண்ட் என்ன இங்க வந்து கவர்மெண்டோட ஸ்டாண்ட் என்னன்னா ஏற்கனவே இருக்கிற ஆக்ட் வந்து இட் இஸ் நாட் ப்ரமோட்டிங் பிரைவேட் அக்ரோ ஃபாரஸ்ட்ரி ட்ரீ பிளான்டேஷன் ஆக்டிவிட்டி ஏன்னா வி ஆர் ட்ரைங் டு ரீஃபாரஸ்ட் 
or a forest and we wanted to improve tree cover using private agroforestry but in the forest conservation act la idala allowed illa adanal idu allow pandrathukaga naanga vandu amendment pandrom nu government solranga but idu allow panna carbon sink increase agumana illa apdithradha scientific ah prove anadhu friends remember this we have to understand that inga vandu கவர்மெண்ட் என்ன சொல்றாங்க பிரைவேட் ஆக்ரோஃபாரஸ்டி மூலமா நாங்க ட்ரீ கவர் இன்க்ரீஸ் பண்றோம் ட்ரீ பிளான்டேஷன் மூலமா நாங்க ட்ரீஸ் இன்க்ரீஸ் பண்றோம் அப்படின்னு ட்ரீஸ் இன்க்ரீஸ் பண்றதுல தான் இருக்காங்க ஃபாரஸ்ட் இன்க்ரீஸ் பண்றதுல இல்ல அண்ட் யூ ஷுட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஓல்டு ட்ரீஸ் சயின்டிபிக்கா இதுதான் ப்ரூவ்டு ஓல்டு ட்ரீஸ் ஆர் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் கார்பன் சிங்க் அதாவது கார்பன் டை ஆக்சைடை ஓல்டு ட்ரீஸ் தான் அதிகமா குறைக்கும் அதிகமா observe pannu rather than the new trees or the new cultivated trees so you have to understand that this is a scientific truth but the government is not scientifically understanding that uh, we need to promote or we need not we should not cut the older trees but we should con- uh, construct newer trees is what the uh, the, uh, the government stand is so this is very against the scientific explanation and also from 2019 to 20, 21 india added 1540 uh, square kilometers outside forest abdinu solranga so nanga outside forest e nariya tree cover increase pandrom adukku vandha forest conservation amendment vandha panna da nama vandha idala tree cover vandha increase panna mudiyum and the new amendments is clearly defining the limits of 1996 judgment uh, and only landed land recorded as forest in any government record on or after 1980 and no, uh, the forest land authorized by state for non forestry uses between 1980 1996 would not invoke the provision idha pathi nam pesitom so forest na enna abdina olunga define limit ah vande in the particular amendment moolama government vande clear ah sollirukanga ena godavarman case la olunga sollala naanga olunga solrom nu government stand edukudhu government is telling that we will allow all the forest before 1990 uh, sorry after 1980 only if it is notified and uh, any forest which are converted to non forest use la non forest da adha vandha forest nam consider panna mattom appdinu solirchu so what is this amendment is it is no longer classifying the unclassified forest land or patches or, of trees with forest like characteristic as forest land so godavarman enna godavarman judgment la enna solranga ella forest land yum nam forest nu consider pannanum ana indha judgment indha act la vandu stay forest like characteristics or forest land irukiradala vandu the state cannot need not classify as forest abindradum adhai solranga so it is diluting the forest uh, godavarman judgment adhu vandu namalukku theriyudhu in one it is allowing the forest for strategic and security purposes so this will affect the forest conservation abindna என்விரான்மெண்டலிஸ்ட் ஆத்தரும் சொல்றாங்க ஆத்தரோட கன்சர்ன் என்னன்னா இதுல பார்லிமெண்டரி கமிட்டி வந்து எதுவுமே சொல்லல எந்த ஒப்பீனியனும் கொடுக்கல சஜஷன் கொடுக்கல அது ஒரு பெரிய பிரச்சனை அண்ட் பிரைவேட் ஃபாரஸ்ட் குரூம் பண்றது வந்து வெறும் கார்பன் கிரெடிட்ஸ் இம்ப்ரூவ் பண்றதுக்காக பண்ற வேலையை தவிர ஃபாரஸ்ட் கன்சர்வேஷனை இம்ப்ரூவ் பண்றதோ இல்ல கார்பன் ஸ்டாக்கை இம்ப்ரூவ் பண்றதுக்கான வேலை இல்ல அப்படின்னு ஆத்தர் சொல்றாரு அண்ட் கவர்மெண்ட் வந்து ஒழுங்கான சயின்டிபிக் எவிடன்ஸோட இந்த மாதிரி கன்சர்வேஷன் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட் பண்ணணும் ஏன்னா கன்சர்வேஷன் அமெண்ட்மெண்ட்ல ஒரு ஃபாரஸ்ட் ஒரு சயின்டிபிக்கா ப்ரூவ் ஆன விஷயம் என்னன்னா ஓல்டர் ட்ரீஸ் ஆர் மோர் older trees are acting more as a carbon stock and simply improving the tree cover is will not uh, improve the carbon stock it, you should uh, you should protect the dense forest more than the open forest that is you have to understand so there should be a proper scientific study in all eppadi vand climate vand climate change korekiradha eppadi forest tree forest vand carbon stock ah maatradha abindradha vand nama olunga scientific evidence oda forest conservation bill pannirukalam abindha author vand oru oru wave of concern ah solirkaru then the south china sea dispute friends we will see a small story for the south china sea dispute before going into this uh, south china sea dispute so we will have a small story so what is the south china sea dispute so china is climbing the south china sea which is usually uh, have to be shared between vietnam vietnam malaysia brunei philippines taiwan so uh, 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 malaysia so all these countries 
are sharing their maritime border in the south china sea dispute so this is Ch south china sea so this is south china sea so south china sea la vande why south china sea is important first we will do that also so south china sea is very important because 40 percentage of the petroleum trade is happening there so this it is important as a sea lines of communication so it is an important sea line of communication many of the trade between the in, uh, indian ocean and pacific ocean especially between the uh, african countries and the asian countries between many many other uh, countries middle east countries to the asian countries so we have to understand these are important trade routes so it is a sea lines of communication 40 percentage of the petroleum trade is happening here and almost 20 percentage of the total sea maritime uh, trade is happ happening here so it is a important maritime route it is an important maritime route for the world so that is very important so it's important sea lines of communication that there are lots of natural gas coal and other petroleum reserves in this particular thing and there is a lot of fishing resources which are there here and there is a lot of uh, important strategic strategic reason that is behind uh, uh, south china sea being very important so south china sea is very important for the economic aspect for strategic aspect for political aspect so it's very very important geopolitical geo economic uh, uh, dispute that we have to understand in south china sea and especially when it comes to there are lots of uh, islands which are uh, in uh, conflict between different different countries like if it is parasol island there is a conflict between china and vietnam if it is scarbar or shoal there is a conflict between china and philippines and if it is patty islands there is a, a conflict between china and uh, 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 brunei malaysia and all and south china sea uh, the china is climbing almost all of the south china sea using a nine dash line earlier it was a 11 dash line and now it is a nine dash line so this dashes you, you can see these dashes it is saying that these are the areas which are uh, part of uh, uh, china's uh, maritime uh, territory this is what the china is saying so china is unilaterally climbing the entire south china sea for itself so it is telling that it will only use the fishes the resources and it will prevent the trade or the they, there is a also the air air defense identification zone there is something called as air defense identification zone so the china is climbing the air space the water the bottom of the sea the resources of the sea everything the china is climbing in the south china sea so but what is the rules what is the international rules for the maritime borders? International rules, especially there is something called as UN clause. That is UN Convention on Law of Sea, which says there is important, that is it has partitioned the whole uh, maritime or whole ocean into different, different places. If China, if for China, these this is the, uh, this is the EE, is it? which will wherein the china can uh, exploit the resources so china vandu in the e is that it vandu e is that vandu it will be 200 nautical miles from the chinese uh, coastal air, coastal border so and the edathil irundha 200 nautical miles vandu china e is that use pannikalam adu vandu adoda resources la and edathil exploit pannikalam adukapra irukiradala paathina high seas which is common for uh, other people also so anybody, even India can come and uh, explore this high seas and use the resources. But in the path, China would ease it. In the, uh, sorry, Vietnam would ease it. In the, uh, Malaysia would ease it. Either, sorry, Kila. So China, Malaysia would ease it. Either, Brunei would ease it. Either, Philippines would ease it. Either. Now, UN clause vandu define panirko maritime border vandu solirko but the china is not following this international rules and it is climbing all the uh, south china sea towards itself so this is unilateral climb this is affecting the international rules law rules and law rule of law and it is against the uh, the interest of the other countries the interest of the other countries like Vietnam, Philippines, who are depending on the trade, depending on the resources, depending on the fishings, depending on the uh, sea, sea lanes of communication, depending on the airspace. 
for in the sea for their uh, economy for their pol politics so this is affecting uh, this is all being disputed by china so china is aggressive in the south china sea it is developing many many uh, artificial islands artificial shoals artificial reefs this is affecting the natural reefs natural uh, coral reefs especially the natural resources it is affecting the natural resources it is hampering the natural uh, or uh, the it is distorting the whole natural features itself on the geography it distort pandra alavukku and the geography eppadi irundadun kuda theriyada alavukku vandha china oda develop pannanga romba adhigama aayiduchu so it is affecting the uh, important areas so this is affecting india also because india's oda india oda trade vandha south china sea moolama irukku and we also wanted uh, petroleum resources from vietnam from philippines where in the philippines and vietnam is getting the petroleum reserves from the south china sea so that it is very important for india for energy security for that uh, for the maritime security so so on and so for, so forth so that is very important wherein we need to study about the south china sea dispute so what has happened what is the article is talking about there is something called as permanent court of arbitration i wanted to talk tell you about permanent court of arbitration before going into the details of this particular editorial what is permanent court of arbitration friends you have to understand there are different different uh, courts international courts there is something called as icj there is something called as icc all formed in the uh, all there in the paris so if you you understand this uh, thing uh, okay uh, so the, these are formed in by, this icj is a part of united nation but icc is not part of united nation but icj is uh, having certain jurisdictions icc have a ju certain jurisdictions and icj will have certain members and icc will have certain members there is a different body called a pca which is called as permanent court of arbitration here this is a court this is a court but this is a court of arbitration so it is alternative dispute resolution mechanism so using arbitration conciliation mediation these are the important things that are done see usually nama court la pathinga na vandu juris oru vandu court la vandu judgment kudupanga but inga vandu pathinga na pca la pathinga na arbitration pannuvanga wherein the both the party will come and discuss and resolve the disputes using lawyers also so and the madri or important court da or important arbitration council da in the pca idu vandu or united nation sorry non united nation intergovernmental organization that was formed in hague netherlands it's not a judicial court it is an arbitration tribunal that will resolve disputes whenever the parties are coming and uh, uh, complaining and it can uh, uphold the international laws and rules it will follow the un clause like uh, rules and it will uh, arbitrate particular disputes whenever there is a complaint and it is it is a united nation observer and it is not a uh, part of the united nations it is only an observer that you have to understand and the first uh, hague peace of conference happened in 1899 and this pca was formed in around 1907 to 13 and pca is not a court in conventional understanding that you have to understand friends why we are talking about pca so we will uh, see that in this particular editorial united nations convention on all of the sea was adopted in 1982 so this i already told you so what is this united nation convention it is providing the rules governing the so it has said uh, it has classified it has classified something called as territorial water it has classified something called as territorial water contiguous zone exclusive economic zone high seas this you have to understand so uh, from the co coastal region that is the baseline of the coastal region 12 nautical miles is considered as territorial sea then the 12 nautical mile is considered as contiguous zone from baseline till 200 nautical miles it is considered as ee is it that is exclusive economic zone and this territorial water if you see territorial water the the country that is the country the coastal country can use anything can do anything can use it for anything so they have a full sovereignty over territorial waters and in the contiguous zone also they have full control and full sovereignty but they can also allow the others to come in and go uh, so for uh, immigration for anything they can come and uh, go 
and in exclusive economic zone again the state have the control over economic resources but they cannot prohibit other country other sh countries ship to come and go so this is where the exclusive economic zone is having sovereignty where is it is giving sovereignty or uh, power control over the resources but it's also allowing other countries to ship to use their ship and navigate in this particular region and the high seas is the away from the ez it is it can be exploited or it can be used by any other country it is not having any national border so till ez it's a national maritime border after after ez it's a high sea where if any country it is a global property so like this you can understand then what is the prob uh, the recent uh, news indian and Philipp philippines ministers met in june and it, these two are important maritime asian republics and it has uh, enjoyed 75 years of diplomatic history and here in this we have to understand that india has been vocal india has been vocal about its its uh, support for philippines and its uh, it is against china and it's saying that China should respect the uh, PCA judgment on 2016. What is this PCA judgment, which I told you, PCA, we have already told you. In 20, 20, 30, 2013, I hope this happened uh, uh, for till 16. And 16, the judgment came. The China contested against the Philippines. The China contested uh, Philippi uh, or, uh, Philippines slapped a case against China. The Philippines uh, went to the PCA and it complained against China. And China versus Philippines was a case in this PCA. In this, PCA said that China is illegally climbing the uh, South China Sea. And it's very, very imp improper and illegal. And China cannot uh, climb the whole of South China Sea. So this is what the uh, ar arbitral award of PCA. So this is what the arbitral award of PCA. And in this particular meeting with uh, India and Philippines, India has endorsed the arbitral award and asked China to respect this arbitral award. So this is a voc vocal uh, or voice against China and it is a voice to support Philippines. This we have not done before. Here in this particular meeting, we have been very vocal about, we have voiced out our uh, opposition for China in climbing the South China Sea. So this is an important development that you have to understand in this particular, uh, 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 in this particular meeting. Okay, so then uh, we have to talk about the the important other developments that has happened. The decision is to open the resident defense attache office in Manila, boosting cooperation of between the Coast Guard, acquisition of naval assets by Manila, uh, Manila, and expansion of training and joint exercises for security disaster response, commencing a maritime dialogue, or some of the examples that was evolving the strength of this nautical partnership. So we have done a, lots of cooperation with the uh, Philippines. And there is an agreement on regional and multilateral issues, particularly on maritime highways on South China Sea. So these are the very important developments between Philippines and India. And we have also reiterated our consistent position for China to follow, or every country should follow the UN clause rules. That is what we have uh, consistently uh, asked. And uh, here in this, we have uh, called the China to respect the 2016 arbitral award. This is very vocal. Earlier, we said uh, we are uh, only noting it, but now we have asked China to follow this arbitral award. So this is a very, very huge development uh, 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 that you have to understand, friends. So we have already talked about, and what is this arbitral award in PCA has said? PCA has said that China's assertions that it had historical rights in South China Sea is unwarranted. So China cannot claim any historical rights. It cannot claim any unilateral claims on South China Sea is what the PCA has said. And it has also said China has, uh, 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 it has caused irreparable harm to the maritime environment. They will have a construction, development, artificial island create and the 
அஃபெக்ட் பண்ணிருச்சு சைனான்னு பிசிஏ சொல்றாங்க பட் பிசி என்ன சொல்லலன்றதும் ரொம்ப முக்கியம் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் பிசி ஹஸ் நாட் ஹஸ் நாட் டோல்டு தட் திஸ் இஸ் that is china china is doing unlawful abdinu solitaanga but it has not restricted its construction ninga stop pannano nu solala ninga pannadhu thappu nu solirukku but pc vandha ninga stop pannano ninga vandha military installation panna koodadhu ninga construction panna koodadhu nu stop pannala so this is where there is a drawback in the pca's arbitral award so it is very important that uh, it has not total it was not totally against china you have to understand that china also did not uh, support this or it did not even uh, took any anything it did not even adavad uh, pc award vandu adu kandukave illa adu da unma china vandu adu vandu madikave illa endra da unma but vandu pc avu vandu romba far fetched of china vandu against ah solala it has only said it has to it, these are illegal it has not asked to stop because it's again a not a court it's a only an arbitration council that you have to understand and south china sea again we have already discussed south china is very very important for our trade and economy it is now, there is need for a peaceful conflict resolution because we need to uh, resolve this conflict because it's always happening conflict there is a lot of it is like a war like situation that is affecting the maritime security of uh, india as well as the uh, so, uh, pacific uh, countries so we have to uh, resolve this conflict resolution here in this author is giving a in a of solution what he is saying is what he is saying is uh, or, or he is saying we have to use asian we have to use asian countries to have a quiet diplomacy in uh, prevent quiet diplomacy in uh, preventing this or resolving this solution uh, a south china sea dispute this is very innovative uh, idea and he is saying we have to create a legally uh, code of conduct in the south china sea and this should be done by asia this is what the author is talking about he is giving a solution for the so, resolving the south china sea dispute and the last but not the least it's a cpi basket uh, so what is the author how they are criticizing whether cpi basket is good or not let's see what are the issues in cpi what uh, the author is saying the the products the products which are used to calculate the inflation in the cpi is very outdated we are uh, we are taking into factor like old uh, video cassettes trunks uh, cds dvds which are out of uh, out of use so cds dvds vanda nam ipo use pandradilla ipo vanda nam vanda pen drive vanda madri la use panna aarambichitom cd dvds la nam use pandradilla but cpi la innum adha dhaan calculate pannirukanga so it is all, all, all already outdated அதுக்கப்புறம் என்ன சொல்றாங்கன்னா தெர் இஸ் அ ஷிஃப்ட் இன் சொசைட்டல் நீட் ப்ரிஃபரன்சஸ் ஸோ சிபிஐ வந்து ரொம்ப டைனமிக்கா இருக்கணும் அது மாறிக்கிட்டே இருக்கணும் ஏன்னா நம்மளோட நீட்ஸ் நம்மளோட நம்ம கன்செப்ஷன் பேஸ்கெட் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் சேஞ்சிங் அப்படின்னு சொல்றாங்க பட் இந்த கன்செப்ஷன் பேஸ்கெட் என்னன்னு தெரிஞ்சுக்கிறதுக்கு வந்து நம்ம வந்து முத கன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் டேட்டா வந்து எடுக்கணும் பட் இந்த கன்செப்ஷன் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் டேட்டா வந்து ரொம்ப டிலே ஆகுது அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு அந்த ஆத்தர் சொல்றாரு இந்த கன்செப்ஷன் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் டேட்டா இஸ் டிலேயிங் அப்படின்றத வந்து ஆத்தர் வந்து சொல்றாரு சோ கன்செப்ஷன் எக்ஸ்பென்சிச்சர் டேட்டா வந்து டிலே ஆகுது அதனால வந்து நம்ம சிபிஐ ரிவைஸ் பண்றது வந்து ரொம்பவும் டிலே ஆகும் அப்படின்றத ஆத்தர் சொல்றாரு அண்ட் ஆல்சோ த ஆத்தர் இஸ் டாக்கிங் அபவுட் த ரிடக்ஷன் இன் த வெயிட்டேஜ் கிவன் டு த ஃபுட் இது வந்து நல்ல விஷயம் தான் வி ஹாவ் டு ரிடியூஸ் த வெயிட்டேஜ் கிவன் டு த ஃபுட் பிகாஸ் வி ஆர் நவ் ஸ்பெண்டிங் மோர் ஆன் நான் ஃபுட் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் லைக் ஃபுட் ஹெல்த் சாரி எஜுகேஷன் ஹெல்த் ஹவுசிங் இதுக்கு தான் நம்ம அதிகமாக வந்து எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் பண்ணுறோம் தட்ஸ் அ குட் தட்ஸ் அ காமன் ட்ரெண்ட் தட்ஸ் அ குட் ட்ரெண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் ஃபாலோயிங் த ஏஞ்சல்ஸ் லா ஸோ ஏஞ்சல்ஸ் லா என்ன சொல்கிறாங்க வென் த இன்கம் ரைசஸ் த ப்ரொப்போஷன் ஆஃப் த இன்கம் ஸ்பெண்ட் ஆன் த ஃபுட் வில் ஃபால் திஸ் இஸ் அ குட் ட்ரெண்ட் ஓன்லி திஸ் இஸ் குட் பட் இட்ஸ் நாட் இனஃப்னு வந்து ஆத்தர் சொல்கிறாரு வி நீட் டு ஸ்டில் ரிவைஸ் த சிபிஐ பேஸ்கெட் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஹவு த கன்செப்ஷன் சேஞ்சஸ் ஹவ் டன் in the recent past so nama eppadi consume pandrom endradu understand pannikitte nama cpi basket update pananum abindra tha solranga especially he is telling that food expenditure nama reduce panitom especially nama cereals ku spend pandrathu vanda nama korichitom ena now the people have started increasing their expenditure on vegetables fruits uh, common or uh, the millets indha maathiri vishayangala la improve panitanga adanal 
ஒழுங்கா வந்து நம்ம வந்து கன்செப்ஷன் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் டேட்டா வந்து முதல் எடுத்துட்டு அதை வந்து சிபிஐ வந்து ரிவைஸ் பண்றதுக்கு யூஸ் பண்ணும் வி ஷுட் நாட் டிலே த டேட்டாஸ் தட் ஆர் தேர் ஃபார் கன்செப்ஷன் எக்ஸ்பெண்டிச்சர் சர்வே ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் வெரி வெரி ஷார்ட் ஆர்டிகல் ஸோ வி ஹாவ் டு இம்ப்ரூவ் ஆர் டேட்டா கலெக்ஷன் அண்ட் Inflation estimation using digital economy. So, we have developed it in digital life. But in the data collection, we are going to be backward. The author is concerned about it. So, we have to be way forward. So, we have to be way forward. so we have to increase determine the population under the poverty line so poverty line estimation la in the inflation estimation the cpi basket ellathiyum improve pananu abdinu solittu author is giving a way forward so he is also adding that we have to improve the estimation of poverty line also abdinra madri in the author vandu solirkaru so that we have to understand and our tools for understanding and manage our economic reality are grossly inadequate so nama tools nama use pandra tools vandu inadequate a irukku so ministry of statistics and program implementation should address these gaps promptly abindrada inga author vanda solirukanga we should have an efficient data processing and we should uh, we should promote the uh, uh, review the cpi property line estimation we sh- uh, mospi that is ministry of statistic and program Expl- uh, implementation should not abdicate their responsibility they are responsible for revising the poverty line estimation they are responsible for uh, go- coming up with the conception expenditure data very soon so we have to improve the cpi accordingly abindrada author oda perspective so cpi na enna nu namalukku theriyum retail sector retail uh, அதாவது ஹோல்சேல் பிரைஸ் இண்டெக்ஸ் இருக்கு ரீட்டைல் பிரைஸ் இண்டெக்ஸ் இருக்கு நம்ம வந்து ஹோல்சேல் பிரைஸ் இண்டெக்ஸ் வந்து நம்ம வந்து ஹோல்சேல் கேட்ல வந்து பாக்குறோம் ரீட்டைல் இதுல வந்து சிபிஐ நம்ம பாக்குறோம் இது வந்து நேஷனல் ஸ்டாட்டிஸ்டிக்ஸ் ஆபீஸ் வந்து பண்றாங்க so this is done by uh, national statistics office and the cpa calculates the difference in the price of commodities and services and cpa has several subgroups like it includes food and beverages so nama enna na nama sub consumption basket la irukkongalo adu adalla vechi nama inflation eppadi nu vanda avanga vanda calculate pandranga so we have a types of cpi cpi for industrial workers agricultural laborers rural laborers and rural urban combined so in the mother different different uh, cpi vandu calculate panni they will understand how much the wages should be how much the uh, how much the uh, monetary policy should be how how should the monetary policy should be determined idella pandrathukku vandu cpi is very useful for you and the base year for cpi is 2012 so this you have to understand and the rbi is using cpi as a uh, indicator for uh, inflation and it is using the monetary policy and it is uh, determining the repo rates and other rates using this cpi as a inflation indicator so with that note we will look at all the articles which are there so these this was in the uh, sunday paper so here in this U- uh, us supreme court ban on race based admission so this is a difference between india and us friends you we are uh, re- providing reservation for the uh, uh, the ritually lower caste people like sc st women but the US, us is again or us supreme court is against such uh, uh, positive affirmative steps that because of the people who are racially discriminated they are uh, they are not provide a reservation like that supreme court is against that because it is against equality but we are following equity rather than equality that we have to understand and there is a chip war uh, in this article if you understand there is a chip war between uh, us and uh, china and so you china is restricting uh, certain export on raw materials like gallium and germanium so this is affecting the semiconductor industry is what the this article is talking about and this talk, article is talking about india russia trade payment why in russia india cannot pay in uh, dollars to russia and india is trying to pay uh, uh, to russia in yuan but it cannot pay in rupees so this is an issue that the author is talking about and we have to move away from uh, paying in yuan this is what the author want to tell here because if you are paying in yuan you are in, indirectly uh, uh, 
uh, accepting the internationalization of yuan and if you are trading with russia you are indirectly promoting the russian war that is what the some of the perspective or some of the authors are talking about so whether we are uh, we actually we are trying to buy oil from russia because it's subsidized now because russia wants to supply oil and get revenue out of it to supply for war uh, we are buying it because it's now cheaper but we cannot uh, buy it in rupees because uh, 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 russia does not accept rupees easily and uh, rupee is not an internationalized currency and it, so it russia is getting it uh, from yuan so we have to understand this uh, particular crisis and then in this particular article there are uh, lots of things uh, here especially in this wto if you understand wto uh, dispute redressal commission is not being accepted by us us has always not uh, uh, supported wto or and other international organization like unesco so there is a problem uh, in wto because of uh, us withdrawal in uh, supporting the dispute resolution uh, or dispute uh, settlement body so the author is talking about how it should be us should recognize this uh, wto and india should push for uh, recognition of wto's dispute settlement body is what the author is talking about and there are other uh, important articles you have to read certain important articles in the exam perspective of friends and uh, especially when it comes to uh, artificial intelligence we have already talked about and chandrayaan 3 is a very small article you have to just understand the developments in chandrayaan 3 and how it will be helpful for india and uh, the cleaner politics in this uh, things it is talking about how there is a lot of criminally or uh, criminally charged people who are in the lok sabha and uh, rajya sabha this person who is from association for democratic reforms this association for democratic reforms is an important think tank which tells the a percentage of people in uh, in uh, or percentage of mps who are having criminal charges so the author is uh, telling the people see this many criminally charged people are there around 40 percentage of the current uh, lok sabha is having criminal charged people so we have to uh, we have to reduce the criminalization of politics uh, so that is what the author is talking here and uh, others it's very uh, uh, easy to see and um, the another thing is south china sea disputes which, which we have already seen here in the, because we have uh, local elections in the west bengal there are lots of articles about the local elections and uh, uh, here it, the author is talking about how the scientists should be given uh, freedom of speech there should not be any restrictions or any uh, any indirect form of coercion on the scientists not to speak about the politics or any any uh, impact on the policy so it should not be considered as anti national it should not be considered as uh, against the public interest so scientists should be given freedom of speech is what the author is talking about there is important development in the gst council if you see gst council has come up with a settlement body settlement tribunal and uh, also it has uh, it has uh, reduced lots of rates Uh, that we have to uh, see, and it has increased the rates to twenty eight percentage in online gaming in order to uh, uh, prevent uh, any um, speculation in the online gaming industry. So this is the important development in the GST Council. And uh, others, uh, if you see, this is again about the local government elections in the West Bengal, and this we have already talked about the virtual summit on of SEO. We have done this in the previous editorial, hundred and thirteenth edition. and uh, we have we know about uh, defection uh, problems in maharashtra and other uh, things thank you students hope this uh, session was very useful for you thank you so much wish wish you a uh, uh, great success for the uh, mains 2023 and comment in the comment box for any suggestions and feedbacks and if you like the session please like it and share with your friends for uh, making this uh, particular session more useful and purposeful for other students as well thank you so much enjoy learning and keep uh, yourself safe because it's a very very hard weather uh, uh, i know so uh, keep yourself safe from any health issues thank you so much